If you're a teacher and you really want to understand how Google Docs works, this is the video for you. I'm going to show you some examples of the things that I do with students and how I get them to collaborate and work together in Google Docs. And then I'm going to take you through the process and show you exactly how I create the tables, how I then share the Google Docs so that students can access it. I'm then going to go on to show you how you can control access to the Google Doc, how you can stop access to the Google Doc, Google Doc, and also I'm going to show you some really interesting things you can do with comments. So this is complete training really in using Google Docs for teachers. Really hope you like the video and as always if you do please like it, please share it with other teachers, please comment on it what you think of these ideas and of course join me on my YouTube channel. Let's get started. So here's a lovely example of what I mean. The students write their name on the left hand side and here on the right they write their comments. You can see that it's all been nicely organized so the students can clearly see where they need to contribute to. So it's a collaborative tool and it works really well to get students to collaborate together and highlight and obviously write and give their opinions. In this example, you can see that what I've done afterwards as the teacher, I've come in and highlighted some of the things that I'm going to talk about in the classroom afterwards. So for homework, the students were adding up their ideas. And in class, I'm going to go back and talk about some of the interesting points that students have made. And I've highlighted them so I know where I want to focus. I use this technique a lot as well where students for example write their ideas and then I get other students to reply and leave the comments underneath in the same box uh, but to choose a different colour so it's clear where the student has replied and in this case the students actually left their name as well. Again this is a really powerful way of creating collaboration, discussion, debate etc. So let me quickly take you through how I do all that. First thing is obviously sign into your Gmail account. Come over here and you want to click on your Google Drive. You can access all of your Google Docs from your Google Drive. Now to create a Google document just click on new and you'll notice it's the first one in the list Google Doc and I'm going to start with using a blank document though there are templates that you can use as well so if you just quickly click on the templates just to see you get a whole series of predefined templates that you can make use of I'm not going to do that I'm going to click on a blank one I'm going to use a blank one and I'm going to format it myself now the first thing to do whenever you create a Google Doc is give it a title so click up there on the left hand side I'm going to call this one discussion and I'm going to call it class 7 because it's a discussion that's taken place in class 7 and what I always do is normally write the question here at the top and then I create a table so that the students know exactly where to put their name and to write their ideas so let's quickly add in here at the top the instructions on what the students should do so you can see I've just typed my question here at the top of the screen very easy just click and start typing and I normally format this so what I do is I select it and I put that into bold once I've written my question now what I'm going to do underneath is I'm going to create a table so that students can answer the question to so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert uh, a table now I've got 10 students in this class so I'm going to make a table with 10 rows okay and I'll make 11 rows actually, you'll see while in a minute, and then I'm just gonna make it two columns across. Then here I'm gonna write name, and I'll make that column much shorter because I don't want, the students won't need a lot of time, of space to put in their name, and then they can add their comments here. So now I've made it really clear where they add their name and where they add their comments. If you're looking for a freer way for students to collaborate, so perhaps where they just add things onto the screen wherever they want on the screen, then I would suggest Google Google Jamboard because that kind of is allows for a bit freer type of collaboration rather than this very controlled collaboration in boxes and in tables. And I'll put a link on the screen now in case you want to jump over and look at Google Jamboard. Now, how are students going to access this Google Doc? Well, the way they're going to access it is that you're going to click on Share. 
And in most cases, what you're going to do is you're just simply going to share the link so that the students can edit. Now, it is possible if you have an email of all the students to just add their emails and then they become editors. But I'm going to imagine that you probably don't have all their email addresses. And the easiest way, therefore, is to come down here and to change this to anyone with the link. And now you want to set anyone with the link. What can anyone with the link do? They can edit. That will allow them to write into the document. Now all you need to do is to click on copy the link and share that link with your students. They can click on the link and then they can access the document. So click on copy linked and then click on done. And now share that link with your students and they will be able to access the document. They'll be able to write their name here and then add their comments on the right hand side, etc. So it's a very, very easy tool to start to get student, student share, students sharing. Just a super, super quick break from the video. If you are enjoying this video, please come over to teachertrainingvideos.com. Loads more free videos you can see at the top here. There's a menu system, but there's also loads of videos on the front page. And at the bottom, you can also access my blog, which is free. And at the moment, if you sign up to the newsletter, you will be given a 14 part video course in how to use technology in education. And this is one video every three or four days. There are no tricks, simply focusing on the key technologies that we're using in our teaching and learning. Of course, you also get updated with all the latest videos and articles, and of course, the courses that I run. Thanks ever so much. Let's get back to the video. Okay, so we've looked a little bit at how we can get our students to collaborate and work on a document. But what I want you to understand now is the things that we can do to control how the students access the document. You can turn the document to viewer mode. So simply by turning it, changing it from editor to viewer, the same document with the same link, the students now can't write in the document. They can only view and read the document. Things get a little bit complicated when it comes to commenting. If we set the comment mode, then students can't write into the document, but they can comment on it. So it's kind of a halfway house between writing in the document and not being able to write. They can comment, but they can't write in a document. Now, this is made just a little bit complicated by one thing. The students can still write in the document, but the person that created the document is able to decide if they want that to be there or they don't. So they can just click on the button and it will disappear. So when you're in comment mode, you can still write in the document, but the person that created the document, that is the editor of the document, has the ability with just one button click to delete anything that's been added into the document. So in comment mode, there's actually kind of two ways. You can write in the document, but maybe the editor won't accept it, or you can comment on the side. And I'm gonna try my best now to demonstrate these two points because they are really, really important. Now let's imagine that all the students have now added in their information and you don't want anyone else to write. All you need to do is come over to the share button and change this to anyone with the link can view. Done. So you don't need a new link. It simply means now that that link is not active. If students click on the link, they can look at the document, but they can't edit or add anything to the doc document. So if we've got it set to view and we click on copy link and we're going to jump in now and actually look to see what the student can do. So I'm just going to jump over to another browser and here I'm logged in as another student and notice it's not possible to write on the screen. I can only view the document because we've got it set to viewer only, not editor. Now, sometimes what you want students to do is to actually comment on what other people have written. And I use this technique a lot. Now, to do that, what you need to do is to come over to the share button 
and change the access to can comment. Okay, so now with the same link, it's not the new link, the students will not be able to write into the actual uh, document, but they can comment on the side. Now, if we select some of the text, this is the best way to do it, and then click on this button here. This is the way that I teach my students to comment. So they select the text that they want to comment on, and then they click here, and then they can write their comments so this is my comment okay and then click on comment and that comment is added now you can you know just select a small part of it exactly the same and then click here again and then this is my comment so there are actually various ways of comment on a document but this is the way that i like to encourage my students now, I actually want to show you how this looks like, okay? So if I click on share and I copy that link, and I'm now going to log in as a student. So here I'm logged in as a student, and you'll notice that I can add comments, so I can click here, and then I can click, or sorry, select whatever I want to comment on, and then click on this button, and then I can, I can add comment, okay? So you can see exactly how it works. Now, this is very important. When you're in comment mode, it is still possible to write in the document. I can still write in this document. The difference is that when you write that, it's up to the person that created the document whether to accept what you've written or not. Now, when you normally write in a document, it will be in the document. But if you are in comment mode, then the person that created the document can decide whether to keep what you've added or not. So if we come back to this person, the person that actually created the document, notice that what this person can do okay, is that they can just click and say, I don't accept that, and then it will disappear. So what you need to understand about comments, comments are quite complicated, is that the student who created, or the teacher who created the document in comment mode can control if something is actually added to the document or not. So people can comment to the side, but you can still write in the document, but somebody else, the person that edited the document, can override that. I hope I'm making that clear, because often that creates a lot of problems. Now, one great thing about Google Docs is that when you learn Google Docs, Google Slides is very similar. Google Slides works a little bit like PowerPoint, but again, students collaborate. They can add up pictures, they can add up text, they can comment, they can only view, or they can edit. If you want to learn how to use Google Slides because it's similar to Google Docs, then there's a video on the screen now that will take you through Google Slides. I'm just going to show you a few advanced features now in Google Docs. Now, one thing you might want to do is to format and make the table look better, uh, perhaps with different colors. Now, what you can do is you can select that top row, for example. So just simply select that top row, right click, click on table properties, and then come down to color and change cell background color. And I'm going to use, for example, a kind of bluey color. And now you can see that the top column is formatted and that can be really nice if you want the actual table to look more professional. Now another thing that you can do as well and you might find this useful sometimes it can be quite nice is you can encourage students to use emojis so insert and they do have the option of adding emojis so if you click here you've got a whole range of emojis that students can add in if you want them to do that as well okay so you can click again on insert come down to emojis and students have all sorts of emojis that they can add in to the image if you want them perhaps to use emojis as a way of demonstrating that they like something or that they don't like something or etc. So that's again something else you might like to consider. Okay, really hope you liked that video. 
And if you did, please come over to teachertrainingvideos.com. Loads more free videos. Remember, you've got this menu system here at the top, but you can also just scroll down on the front page. Loads and loads of content available. There's my blog at the bottom of the page. And as I said before, if you sign up to the newsletter, you get updated on all the latest blog posts, on all the latest videos, on the free webinars that we often run, as well as all the information about my courses. But at the moment, there's also a free 14-part video course in tips for using technology in teaching and learning. Uh, you can also contact me from the website if perhaps you want me to do some training with your organization or with you as an individual. So you can contact me from the website. And thank you very much. I'm going to leave some more videos on the screen now that look at different aspects of working with Google products like Google Forms and Google Docs.